bow. In this video I'm going to show you how to add texture to your 3D model. For this example I'm going to do this in 3D coat but this could also be done in ZBrush. Uh, the process is pretty similar in both so I'm more familiar with 3D coat so that's what I'm going to use. I'm not an expert in 3D coat so I'm not sure exactly if this is the best way of doing it, but this is how I do it. Uh, if you know something that may be a little simpler to do or something I'm doing incorrect, um, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, and I'm always learning on on this 3D Coat program. Uh, I don't have as much experience as I do with Fusion as I do 3D Coat, but you cannot do textures in uh, Fusion 360. So. Uh, you have to use um, either 3D Coat or ZBrush. For this one, I'm going to pull up um, my Red Hood Domino I have, and I'm going to add a, I guess, a weave texture to it. So I'm just going to uh, import my STL file, load it up. Uh, there it is. I'm going to auto scale it. I'm going to put this gizmo thing in the center of it, and then I'm going to move this. To the center, so it's going to put zero and all the axes, so I can actually see it. And there we go. Now I'm going to hit apply, and yes, I want that. And I'll put on draw, and there you go. There is my model. You can see. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is add symmetry to it. So I go to symmetry, symmetry, and I think I want to add the X plane. Yes, X plane. You can see it right here. That's exactly what I want to do. Um, in a sec, you'll see in a second why I am doing this. Um, so the, first, the next thing you want to do is you're going to want to make sure that your model is subdivided properly to add texture. Um, texture add, requires a lot of, um, I think they're called voxels. Um, so I'm going to go into view and I'm going to look at the wireframe. This will allow me to see how the, um, the distribution is. Um, you can see it's pretty thick here and pretty thin here. So it's going to distort the texture in this area if you don't have enough um, subdivisions. So what I'm going to go to do is go to subdivide and I'm going to pick sections that I want to add um, more subdivisions. Now you could just do the whole model but then uh, you will eat up a lot of uh, space of the fire will be huge so I'm just going to pick the, the front the top surface not the back surface and uh, that won't eat up as much uh, memory and now uh, you can see why I, I picked symmetry um, because it now will do both sides at the same time so I have to do it twice all right so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back to subdivide I'm going to do subdivide frozen area and I'm just going to hit apply as you can see you got uh, more and and more subdivide and then I'm just going to clear it draw and then you can see it is very subdivided now so that will give me a good texture um, so I'm going to go and do that through all the front of the model like I said I could do the whole model but there's no point of me subdividing the back so I'm not going to be doing any texturing on the back and it will just waste uh, memory so I'm going to go and do the same thing to the other spots here 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 and here and it'll be, there we go, and then apply, apply, clear. Um, I want to get this little bit here that I missed. So it's uh, here, 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 here. Uh, apply, apply, and yep, I'm go over here. I'll get around the nose here. Apply, apply. So I want to keep. I like to keep this 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 number around below 1500, um, especially for something this small. And if you get too much, it it starts bogging down your your slicer. Um, so that's why. I, that's another reason why I'm, I'm dividing it up by hand, not the whole thing. So clear it, and it's going to do this section here. And apply, apply. All right, so I have it now. Um, I have it all nice.
nice and divided up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a texture. Uh, to add a texture, I'm going to use one these stencils. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it on draw, and I'm going to pick a stencil I want to do. I was going to do the weave, so I'll pick this one. This is the weave here. Um, so what I can do here um, is I can adjust how how big it will be, how how, how dense it will be. Uh, I can rotate it. Um, uh, and I can zoom in. So I want I want to make it a little smaller here. So I'm going to bring that in. And now I want to make it small. How come this is not working here? Move it around. Oh, there we go. So there and there we go. This is what I want. I want to make it a little smaller. So now I'm going to do it just like that. I want it like that. So what I like to do is I like to make my alpha brush. I want to make it this normal default and draw. I want to make it as as big as possible because I only want to do one click because if you do multiple you'll with the stencil you'll make multiple um, patterns over overlapping each other so if you just do one click you'll see it gets a nice clear pattern now if I do another if I move it just a little bit and, and just do another click it'll kind of blur it so I don't want I just want to do one large click uh, I just want to do it again here Nah, this is doubling up a little bit. It's because I have it all. You don't want to overlap your. You don't want to overlap this, or you'll do it twice because it's mirroring. Um, I could also take off the mirroring if I wanted to. If I'm having issues with the pattern. Um, let me see here. Let's see how the um, symmetry. I'm gonna turn. May turn off the symmetry. No symmetry, and it's gonna do the whole middle like this. All right, let's try this again, even larger. All right, so we got a crazy defined texture there. Um, way too, way it's way too thick up there. So, so all I'm going to do is um, decrease the intensity. So uh, just holding the um, right mouse button and, and bringing down this intensity bar, and then I'll try it again. Click on it and. Still a little more, still a little too intense. Let's try one more time, a little bit less. And all right, there we go. Then I like to, I'll rotate it and do the sides. Yep, too big. And you can see how it. I'm going to make this smaller so it doesn't overlap as much as the overlap as much as the pattern I already put on it and there you go you got the side and all right let's see, make sure this this pattern's a little small so let's see here uh, all right I'm gonna just enlarge it to kind of match and and now I'm gonna clear it out and then you can see the pattern I just made on it um, it's not perfect I did it quickly I would Maybe try a little harder to get it right. Uh, so, and a little view, turn the wireframe off. And there you go. That's how I make a pattern on there. Um, on the, on these masks, you can do it on, on, on any, any uh, model. Uh, the one thing you want to remember is you want to make it defined enough so it, it will see through the, the print lines. Um, uh, they're not. It's, yeah, they, they actually turn out pretty good, better than I thought. Uh, these patterns actually hide the print lines pretty well too. Uh, so you know, sanding away is not much of an issue because these these patterns hide it pretty well. And uh, I think that's all I have. Uh, there you go.